Welcome to our technology focus videos about CanOpen and CanOpenFD. We have several videos in this line and uh, it starts with the object dictionary concept used by both CanOpen and CanOpenFD. Then we have a video on the SDO, the service data object used by classical CanOpen. This video here is about the universal service data object introduced by CanOpenFD. And we have continuing videos on the PDOs, the process data object separated into the communication and the mapping part. And to conclude this line of videos, we'll have the NMT, the network management. This is about the network management states a device have boot ups, resets, heartbeats, and that sort of things. CanOpenFD supports a number of communication methods and protocols. The one we are looking at here in this presentation is the Universal Service Data Object, or in short, USDO. Now, the objectives for this service are to provide a point-to-point -point communication between all nodes. Uh, in case you're familiar with regular CanOpen, there we have an SDO service, which is only initiated by one device on the system, the manager. The main difference here in CanOpenFD is that now every node can initiate such a point-to-point -point communication. The USDO is a confirmed communication mode. So every request transmitted requires a response coming back, or in case there's no response coming back, the initiator has to um, send a timeout and abort to inform everyone that this transfer failed. A single request and response can hold up to 56 bytes of data. So that's the maximum we can transfer with a single request and response. And there's a session support for faster back-to-back -back transfers. So the initiator can fire multiple requests back-to-back, -back, including a session number. And on the receiver side, if supported, it can be sorted out and session by session is answered. Using the service, we now have read and write access to all the object dictionary entries of every node. So the object dictionary contains all the communication parameters and the process data. And so we can send read or write requests from any node to any other node to access this data. If the data becomes too big, then it's automatically segmented. This means that the data is segmented into individual packages and transmitted then in multiple message pairs, each segment requiring a response again going back and forth. Or we also have a block transfer mode where multiple packages can be transmitted and only one response is returned. For the USDO service, each device has two CAN IDs that it can use to transmit either requests or responses. So there's one CAN ID that we use to transmit USDO client requests or aborts that uses the CAN ID of 600 hex plus the own node ID. And then we have the server response or the server abort, which is transmitted using the CAN ID 580 hex plus the own node ID. For both message kinds, the client request and the server response, the very first data byte determines the destination. So it contains the node ID of the destination of our message. For the receiving side, this means any receiver needs to receive all the USDO client's requests and responses on the system, and then always evaluate the first data byte to see if I am the device that is currently addressed as destination. Let's pick an example from our graphic here. Imagine node number three wants to transmit a request to node number two. So it would use the CAN ID 603, put the number two in the destination in the first data byte and transmit the message. Node number two sees, oh, there's a USDO request 
on the system that has a two in the destination field, so it needs to reply. It prepares the response and uses the CAN ID 582 to transmit the response and as destination it fills in number three. Our hardware setup for the hands-on part is an NXP LPC 55 board and some peak I.O. modules, the Micromod DR, and we have a connection to our computer using the PCAN USB interface, and on the computer we run our software CAN Open Magic Ultimate. In order to be CAN Open FD compliant, Every node must implement at least one USDO server so that it can send responses to requests received. So the server is serving its local object dictionary to the network, but preferably you implement multiple USDO servers so that you can answer to multiple requests that you receive in parallel from different nodes or to support the session numbering. As the destination node ID is part of the data field, it means that any server on the CAN FD level needs to receive all the USD client requests from all the other devices to be able to examine the destination byte. And only if the destination byte matches its own node ID do we start processing the request. On the client side, we must implement a response timeout because if we transmit a USDO request and we do not get a response within the response timeout, then the client itself must transmit a USDO abort with the timeout error code. To try this out, I'm using Can Open Magic. Can Open Magic is a Can Open FD configuration and analysis tool. Now, to get started, we need to hook up to the network. So I'm selecting Network Connect, and I have connected here a Peak System interface, the PCAN USB. And the bitrate chosen on my destination network is an at 80 megahertz running a 500 kilobit arbitration bitrate and a 2 megabit data bitrate. So connected to the network, we see this down here in the status line, but there's a few more settings we need to do in preferences. We want to make sure we enable not SDO but USDO, use the strict version of the protocol and baud rate switching. And over here at the client, we can define the node ID that this utility has when communicating to other devices. So why don't we use a hex 10 or decimal 16 here? To get started, we press the record button, start trace recording. And on my target hardware, I'm pressing the reset button. So we get a boot up message here and an emergency reset message with both the flags for FD and bitrate switching set. So these are our can open can FD messages. Next, I want to access the device. So read from node. And here we'll simply select node number three that we are communicating with. We select an entry to read. For instance, we could say, let's go to 1018 index and sub-index 1 is the vendor ID. So this is what I want to read. Currently it's not yet read. So if I click on read, I get a value returned here. And down here we can see there was the USB USDO upload request and response coming from node number 10. So that's our tool, our utility to node number 3 identity and coming back size four bytes and the value back here hexadecimal number 32 bits the 
vendor ID of the device. Let's now try to provoke an abort. How does a system react um, if we do a request that doesn't work this way? So for example, let's do instead of reading, let's do writing. So I am doing a write to node, again to node number three. Again, select the same entry, the vendor ID. And the vendor ID is a constant value, so it should not be available for writing. So if I try to write here uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and do a write, then we can see fail to complete write server aborted, attempt to write a read-only object. And also down here in the trace recording, we see the same warning message. So this was an abort by the server. Now there's also an abort by the client. If, um, for example, we don't get a response at all, then there is a timeout that needs to be generated. Well, easiest way here to provoke that is I simply select a node ID that we don't have on the system because there will be nobody replying to it. So if I now try the same thing, do a write, then after a while, I'll get a timeout from the client. And so if we look here in the trace, the difference is here the USD abort came from the client. So the same can ID simply said, well, I tried writing this, but nobody replied. And up here, the error was from the server where I tried to write and the server said, well, sorry, I'm not available to be written to with this parameter. I would now like to illustrate to you the difference between the expedited and the segmented transfer. So in the expedited transfer, we have a single exchange of request and response. So there's only one CAN FD frame on the CAN bus, and it contains a maximum of 56 bytes of data. For any segmented transfer, we start with an initial exchange of a single message pair that does not contain any data, but only information about the data transfer to occur. So here we have the information which object to be accessed, and also if it's read or write, and the maximum data size is typically indicated here also. What follows then is an exchange of request and response uh, pairs, and each request response pair contains one part of the total data. And typically this can be up to 60 bytes per segment. So the number of segments used depend on the maximum data size. Here for simplicity, only two pairs of request and response are used. So this is for a maximum of up to 120 bytes data exchanged. The maximum data size supported by the protocol is virtually unlimited. However, typically this data needs to go somewhere. So really it depends on the buffers implemented in both the transmitter and the receiver as what to the maximum data size supported truly is. The largest data packages exchanged on a CAN OpenFD network typically are code updates. So if there are CAN open bootloaders involved and uh, the, a code update is used, then typically the segmented transfer is used to transfer new code. To show the difference between expedited and segmented, let's do two real world live transfers again. So now let's start with a read access of node number three and the object dictionary entry we select is the manufacture device name. The den this name is a string, so this could potentially be a little bit longer. And we can see, well, it's still fit into an expedited transfer. The uh, length down here is 23 bytes and we have the 23 bytes displayed here. So let's try something different. There's one entry we manually created in this node, in this test node at 2010. 
zero and the data type for this is a visible string and this is a longer buffer so if we do a read now then we can see there is a whole lot of data here transmitted it's a string of digits and letters and if we look at the details of the transfer we can now see that here the initial transfer the initial request is a read to 2010 and the response is well this is 128 bytes so we'll transfer it segmented and the data type is visible string and now there's a ping pong going back and forth where every time the tool the client says okay i'm ready to receive the next portion of the data and then the next portion of the data arrives and the last message down here is the end the last segment contains eight bytes and the last eight bytes are transmitted i would also like to show here a segmented write so i prepared another write to node number three entry 2010 visible string and this time the data comes from a text file i prepared so let's do a write and then have a look if we can read this back also yep there's our string so we wrote a new text and we read it back and if we're looking at the trace here then for writing we set an initial message here coming from the utility from node number 10 is 2010 write access we want to write 128 bytes then the answer comes well yep i'm ready to go and then again the ping pong where we transmit one by one the portions of the the segments of the entire data until somewhere here it says at the end okay this is the last segment i'm sending and the last confirmation and similar again the read request here read and the entire text comes back a usdo client when transmitting the request can do that as both unicast or broadcast unicast meaning this is a request for a single node in the system a broadcast is to all nodes in the system and this is addressed by simply putting the destination node id to the value zero so the value zero in destination node id means this is a broadcast to everyone our examples here show a unicast example where node number three communicates with node number four so the usdo request contains as destination node id the number four and the response contains as destination three because it's going back to node number three in the broadcast example here node number three uses as destination address zero so all nodes receiving this need to reply and here in this example we have nodes number four and five on the system they both receive this data and see that with a node id zero they need to reply and they each reply with their own usdo response and as destination address put in three so node number three we have already seen unicast transfers i now want to show you broadcast transfers and to the hardware side i added a few more peak io modules and now let's see what happens if we do a broadcast read of 1018 so here we see again our device 10 which is the canope magic tool here has transmitted with 610 our upload request to read 1018 the identity object coming from node number 10 as a broadcast to everyone now everyone on the network replies so here is node number three 15 5 4 2 they all replied to this initial request now this was a read request we can also do a write request let's try a write heartbeat time 1000 so one second heartbeat time to set the heartbeats and well i have to stop 
this now because now they are transmitting their heartbeats but we can see that right after we in this line transmitted our broadcast to 1017 the heartbeat time then everybody replied and said yep we got it and as we can see onwards everybody is starting producing their heartbeats the usdo protocol also supports a session id however only if both the client and server fully implement this and have the buffers and multiple clients and servers available for it can it actually be used the idea of using the session id is that we can now start sending requests back to back so this is specifically of interest in remote communication when messages go over multiple bridges and it might be quite some time until we get the response. So using the session ID here in this example, node number three could transmit several USDO requests to the same destination node node number four and what's here in the data byte indicated is not the destination but it's the increasing session number so it would transmit here for example session seven eight and nine with usdo requests back to back and then node number four if such multiple requests are supported would send the responses also using the same session numbers one response for session seven one response for session eight and one response for session nine to illustrate the use of session numbers i created three messages here these are all read requests to node number three and they are going to the identity object to sub index one two and three Let's transmit them as fast as we can. So transmit all. And down here in the trace, we can see we, as a node number 10, transmitted the request for vendor ID with session number 128. Then the request to read the product code, session 129. The next message we see is already the first response because we have a very fast node here that re replies quickly. There's not enough delay that all three messages could already go out. So it now replies to the first message received and says, well, this is the answer for your session 128. Then the next comes in and hey, here's your answer for session 129. And last here we have the pair for the session 130, the revision number. So if this would be on a slower network or going beyond bridges, they, it would really be possible to fire out a whole array of read requests to a device and that will process them one by one and always refer to the initial session number. The protocol parameters used within a USDO request and response differ depending if we have a local or a remote access. A local access is to one can open FD network with the node IDs 1 to 127. A remote access is possible to additional can open FD networks with their own nodes from 1 to 127 that are somewhere behind bridges or gateways. The service parameters always present are the destination address or destination node ID. Then we have the command specifier that says if this is a read or write, expedited, segmented and other transfer. Then we have a session id the object so referred to by index and sub index and we have the data type and data itself if used as part of the request or response for all remote accesses so usdo request and responses beyond the local can open fd network we have four additional parameters and these four additional parameters are the destination network ID and the destination node ID. So the node ID within that network. And we also have the source network ID and the source node ID. 
So with these four parameters, we can always determine by looking at these parameters where the message comes from, which node in which network, and where is it going to in which network and which node ID. The following graphic gives us an example on how the remote access works. So let's assume we have here node number three being attached to the network ID number seven, and it wants to access node number five on network two. Then somewhere here in between, we have a bridge here. In this example, we say the bridge has the node ID number nine, and so it bridges between the network seven and the network two. The remote access parameters contain both the source and destination information in both network ID and node ID. So here, node number three now transmits is its request. It transmits it to node number nine because that is the bridge and the additional destination and source parameters are in the remote access parameters. The bridge forwards this request to the next network, to the network number two. And as the destination ID, it now fills in node number five because the final destination is node number five. Node number five starts working on the request. And when transmitting the response, it reinserts the remote access parameters and then transmits the USD response to the bridge, that is node number nine again, and the bridge then again forwards this to node number three in the final USDO response. Here's a summary of the most important terms used around the USDOs, the universal service data objects. When we write data, then of course, the request contains the data because we are writing it. And in USDO terms, this is the download. And on the other side, we have the upload, which is a read. And here the response contains. We refer to a unicast when it's a one-to-one -one or a point-to-point -point request. So one client, one server. But we also have the broadcast where one client communicates to N or to many, to all devices connected. And then we had the expedited and segmented transfer, expedited single request and response, and segmented multiple requests and responses to support larger data. Reviewing the different CanOpen and CanOpenFD communication methods, we can say that the difference between a CanOpen PDO and a CanOpenFD PDO are primarily the size. So um, a CanOpenFD variant of a PDO can have up to 64 bytes, whereas a CanOpen PDO is limited to 8 bytes. Other than that, PDOs are always multicast. So the devices producing them just fire them off and it's up to the receivers to decide if they want to receive those or not. So that's a multicast, a one to N relation. And in regards to the triggering, PDOs can not only be triggered by the application, there can also be various automated triggers, change of state, time, sync, and sync with a counter. The can open SDO is a confirmed one-to-one -one communication method. It can do segmentation when needed, limited to four byte of data when doing an expedited, so a single request and response. And the biggest limitation here is that really the channels available and can open are limited. So per default, there's only one SDO client for all nodes. So only one device can be um, a manager that communicates to all others. With some extra effort there, we can work around this issue, but the default is that it's only one. And last, the can open FD universal SDO brings everything together. It offers one-to-one -one as one-to-many communication and the client can also be done by any node. So here truly every can open node in the system 
can issue SDOs or universal SDOs to every other node in the system, allowing to implement a very powerful communication exchange method here.